Hi, my name's Dan Keane, and this is Fracture Sound Moonlight Celeste, recorded intricately in the same recording space as Glacier Keys, Midnight Grand, Spotlight Piano, and Dulciano. And with the help of atmosphere and music box layers, there's a lot of scope to create not only traditional orchestral performances, but also contemporary cinematic scores as well. So let's have a look at the controls and stick around to the end to see a quick composition that I've composed using the library. Starting off with our color control. This is effectively an EQ. As we turn it to the left, we get a darker sound. And when we turn it to the right, we get a brighter sound. If I'm writing soft, quiet passages, I'll often just turn the color down to about 10 o'clock. It's got such a lovely sound. I'm going to return this to 12 o'clock for now, and you can do so by hitting Command and then clicking, and it goes back to its default position. Next, we have Attack and Release. This is ultimately to give you more control over the sound, but you can also use it in slightly more experimental ways. So if I just solo the raw layer for now, if I turn up the attack, you can hear that we've lost the transient at the very beginning. Similarly, I can turn up the release as well to elongate the length of that tail. Keeps on going. And if I unsolo it now and integrate it with the other Atmos layers, um, you can hear, you can create a bit more of a padded sound. I turn this back down just as a comparison. And of course, you can control click to learn a MIDI CC. So if you wanted to assign this to a knob or a fader, you could actually automate this during your piece, and that might create a nice effect for you as well. It's things like this which wouldn't be possible without the process of sampling, and that's why I really like this stuff. So over on the right-hand side here, we have our layer mix. We've got our raw samples, which is just the Celeste by itself, and then we have three Atmos layers. So I'm just going to play those in isolation, starting with the Mystic. Moving on to the reversed rights. And finally, we have the Bright Loon layer.
It's funny, whenever I play a new library, I always pay attention to how I play it for the first time. What colours is it going to draw out of me? And I'm utterly lulled into it. It's such a mesmerising... It's a very calming sound, but when you layer it with those raw layers, it just creates a magic. You can adjust the level of the raw against the atmospheres, but you can also adjust the atmosphere intensity, which is mapped to the mod wheel. Next to layer mix, we also have a mic mix as well. We've got three different mic positions to choose from. If I solo the close mic. Gives us a very direct and intimate sound. Mid starts to reveal a little bit of the room. And finally, far gives us a great room perspective. At the bottom, we have a perspective slider that we can use again with MIDI CC if we want to, to automate that progression between close and far. It's a lovely way to control the instrument. Moving down to the character controls, we've got key noise, which is the sound of the mechanical release of the notes. It's quite intense when it's turned all the way up, but it does, for some reason, make it feel that much more intimate. And it also makes it sound more real. I love that human feel to it. Next, we've got the music box layer, which is awesome. This works in two ways for me. Number one, it gives it a slightly more antique feel but also it's really nice for just putting a bit more of a spotlight on the instrument. Um, without it, you'll notice suddenly you, you lose some transient. As soon as I bring that up. So it's a really great tool when automated to bring focus to a particular part or to help it bed into the mix by reducing it. Finally, we've got lo-fi controls, which was introduced with hemisphere and then trails. And if we click on the little spanner down here, you can see we've got a whole load of controls, including tape saturation, age and warble, noise with the hiss and mechanical. and the speaker type as well. We've got a whole range of options. Next to Lo-Fi, we've got Room Tone and Reverb. With the Room Tone, when I turn this up, it introduces some of the concert hall back into the room. Now I'm running this in Logic and it's currently playing all the time, whether I'm stopped, recording or playing. But I can change this. If I go to settings, in the room tone noise mode, I can change this from always on to host transport. So therefore, if I've paused, it's not playing. And then as soon as my door goes into play and record mode, then it will bring it back in. And finally, we've got reverb. Right now I'm using the hall reverb.
is really beautiful. Now if I move over to the Shimmer reverb, I'm going to demonstrate something that was introduced with Hemisphere and then used again with Spotlight Piano, is the Fade In feature. So if I play a chord, you avoid that sharp transient that would hit the reverb uh, if I demonstrate. This fade-in is brilliant because it adds the reverb only to the tail of the notes. Moving back to the settings panel for a second, we've got our sample start, which enables us to control where in the recording our sample begins. So if I turn this all the way down with a latency, there you go, of 100 milliseconds, you can hear there's a slight delay or latency between me hitting the note and the note actually sounding. That's because it's playing a little bit of the recording that came before that, which is quite critical for creating a realistic performance. It's the sound of the finger hitting the key, it's the sound of the key hitting the key bed. All of those sounds really add to the realism, but it's not always practical when recording. So what I tend to do is turn my sample start all the way up when I'm actually tracking the part. It's really tactile, really great for getting that fast performance. And then when I'm happy with my performance, I can drag it all the way back to 100 milliseconds if I want to, and I can actually adjust the delay in my DAW. So just to demonstrate here, I've got a little passage which I'm going to play with the click and my sample starts all the way at zero. That's perfectly in time with the click, which is great. But when I turn this all the way down to 100 millisecond latency, but now you hear that it's out of time with the click. So I can actually go up to my delay parameters here and offset this by a negative amount. So I'm going to go minus 208 ticks, which when I click on this is exactly 100 milliseconds. And now when I play, we're perfectly in time and we have all of the magic of those little noises before the note began. The clarity filter helps to remove that thump that you get with higher notes that aren't tonal but are part of the mechanical hits. Next we have an extended range. As you'll hear, the bottom note is this C, which is nice, it's a good range generally. But sometimes you just want it to go a little bit lower, so by clicking this, it extends it down another two octaves. This isn't going to be a realistic sound as those samples are being stretched to meet those tunings, but it is sometimes useful to have if you want some extra notes. At the bottom here, we can control whether the atmosphere layers sustain indefinitely or decay naturally. and they really will sustain indefinitely.
Finally, on the response page, there are two options for timbre scaling and volume scaling, and we can adjust the curve and we can also adjust the minimum and maximum points. Now, the best way for me to demonstrate this is to turn the timbre scaling all the way up for a second. And even when I play really quietly, we're accessing what was the hardest dynamic layer. So as you can hear, this produces quite a bright sound. Conversely, if I turn this all the way down, doesn't matter how hard I play, we're accessing the very softest dynamics that were played. So the way that you can use this is if you know that you want a very particular timbre in your music, you could do it like this. And that way, how hard you hit the key affects only this range. This creates quite a narrow dynamic range. Um, but might be easier to control, especially if you're performing on a keyboard, which is a little bit more difficult to control. Volume scaling affects the playback volume of the samples. So if I turn this all the way up again, the relative volume difference in those samples was actually quite small. Conversely, if I bring this all the way down, this is going to give us the biggest volume difference between our softest dynamic and our loudest dynamic. Again, this is just a nice way to control the playback of our samples. So you could create a really narrow volume difference here. And if you've got particular effects that you're looking to put on this, things like saturation, drive, any of those types of things, it's not going to affect spikes in volume because the volume has been contained by this volume scaling. To get you started, Fracture Sounds has also created 11 snapshots here, which you can access. I've been referencing to the A Well Balanced Celeste preset, but there are some really great ones, including one of my favorites down here. I just love layering this in with my pieces. Speaking of which, I'm going to show you a piece of music which has been hiding here all along that I composed using just Moonlight Celeste and an Enigma synth from Trails. I just had to get it in there because I just needed a synth texture. But have a listen to this piece of music to hear it in context. <laughs> 